Tonight, we continue to look into the newest sport on campus, rugby. We check in with the men's side as we welcome one of the men's ruggers to the program. Get ready to go beyond the arch. He is a member of the graduating class of 2018 from Old Forge High School in Old Forge, Pennsylvania. Now at Marywood, he is a freshman criminal justice major in addition to playing the position of scrum half for the first men's rugby squad in Marywood's history. We welcome Mike Cinemella next. You've messed up your son's haircut. Ma? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole! And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. This is awesome! Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the show. I'm pleased to be joined by men's rugby athlete, Mike Cinemella. Mike, 
Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, really happy to have you now. Kier told me that you're the team captain. Is that right? Uh, yes. Well, congratulations on uh, that. Thank so you. We went, we went right to the top here, Fionn the Arch. <laughs> we don't mess around. No, okay. no, sir. So, Mike, how did you find your way to Marywood? Um, well, it's close to my hometown of mm -hmm. Old Forge. So, like, obviously I heard about it, like, through mm -hmm. mail and stuff. And then I went on a visit here, and I just fell in love with the place. I liked it. It was a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a local, too. Yeah. I went to Mid Valley High School. So, you know, I had probably similar experience kind of in terms of uh, hearing about it. So... I mean, I'll ask you some questions that I asked Kira last week, too. We'll kind of compare, but, like, what was your recruiting process like? Or did you meet Coach Golden prior to coming here or no? Uh, no, I did not. I actually, when I first came here, I was not supposed to be playing a sport at all. I had no intentions on it. And then someone mentioned it to me. I went to a practice, and here I am. That was it. <laughs> so how did you – I mean, Kira talked a lot, too, about the inclusive nature of rugby. Did, did, did you see that right off the bat, that they were very welcoming to you? or what do you think? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, I met up with the coach. He was a great guy. Um, he, he really got me interested in the sport and mm -hmm. even at the practices you know many of the teammates like we didn't really know each other but they were all like really welcoming guys and girls and I just I became friends with all of them pretty much like immediately so criminal justice major right? yeah okay so what what drew you to criminal justice um, I just have like a real interest in in that type of field like crime and criminalistics mm -hmm. and things like that and I want a job kind of where I could make a difference in the world and make like a safer place and right. I criminal justice is like a good avenue for that. Mm -hmm. So how have you found the workload so far in the program here in Marywood? Uh, I, lo I love the program. I'm really interested in criminal justice. Um, it's a little bit much to get used to at first, mm -hmm. you know, adjusting from high school to right. college, but uh, it's, it's going well for me right now. I like it. And the balance between the two, between, you know, work, school work and rugby. I mean, so you said you didn't play rugby before, so this is no, yeah, it's got to be brand new. Everything's here. like a learning experience right, right now, all so around. So, do you I feel like you're balancing it well, though? Yeah, right now, like it took some getting used to, of mm -hmm. course, but yeah, I'm getting the hang of it now. Is it helping you in the classroom at all? Do you think? Do you find that, that it's it's a little bit of a like you said? Is, is it you're still kind of figuring that out, or what uh, a little bit of both? I mean, it's definitely helping my time management skills, as mm -hmm. Kira said. Um, but other than that, like some stress does occur, obviously, as mm -hmm. with anything. But I mean, I'm just doing the best I can. So. Now you said this wasn't in the cards really at all for you originally. Yeah. So how did they, I mean, how did you, was it just a spur of the moment thing or did, um, did you weigh it at all or how did they, it? They had a fair at Marywood for mm -hmm. like clubs and such. And mm -hmm. then I met, uh, this kid came up to me and he was just like, oh, are you playing a sport or whatever? I was mm -hmm. like, no. And he's like, you should think about coming up for rugby. And I was like, oh, I've never played before. And he's like, that's how most of the guys are. They haven't played before. So he uh, told me to come out to a practice. So I was like, all right. So I went out, I met up with the coach and I was like, Honestly, this looks pretty interesting and fun, so I gave it a shot. So, how has the how has the learning curve just strictly on the field been going? Do you feel as though you're up to speed already, or more learning? Uh, I, I feel a lot better than now than I did yeah. a couple <laughs> weeks ago. At first, it was definitely a lot to take in, especially at my first game. You know, because mm -hmm. every we all had to like start and play because right. there's there wasn't too many of us, but mm -hmm. um, it was definitely like pretty overwhelming at first but I, I feel a lot more confident in myself now mm -hmm. what was that like what was that first game or match like I mean was it just was well, what, were you an athlete before yeah I, I played soccer that was my thing in high school okay interesting so maybe we could compare it then I mean well, what was the feeling like you know on a college you know you're, you're a college athlete yeah, now so yeah, that must be kind of um, cool to be able to say everything happened real fast so yeah. I was definitely like the first game I was pretty like nervous and mm -hmm. like fired up about it but uh once I got on the field I just like I fell in love with the sport I loved mm -hmm. it I wanted to keep playing are you, I mean, is it, is it kind of cool and exciting to be able to call yourself a college athlete? I mean, that's... Yeah, honestly, yeah, cause especially because I didn't expect it. You know, mm -hmm. if you asked me this a couple of weeks ago, I'd be like, oh, no, I'm not going to be a college athlete. Now, I mean, a lot of people that come on here sometimes are some sort of science-related majors. So, like, I mean, how do you, if, if at all, do you think criminal justice melds with rugby in any way? Are there any, is there anything, and maybe in a kind of in a, even an abstract way that kind of brings the two together? Um, in a way, like, communication and being a team player is a big part of rugby and like that field especially I like mm -hmm. I want to be a state trooper so like I need to be able to talk to other people and get to know people and things mm -hmm. like that so state trooper that's that's yeah. interesting too yeah so I mean you know that's what 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 draws you to that area because obviously you know it is a job that comes with its dangers oh so yeah what draws you to uh, that? it's a little bit more of a high intensity job you know I don't I don't want to be bored or anything mm -hmm. I want to be kind of on the move a little bit um, and I just want to see different things and as I said before I just want to like be able to make a difference in the world and mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good career for me to pursue as far as my personality is concerned. Do you think that that goal helps you in terms of discipline? Oh yeah, 100%. Field? What does that what does that contribute exactly in terms of discipline do you think? Are you just in the right mindset or what do you think it is? Uh, rugby, do you mean rugby or Yes, rugby. Um 
well, like the, a lot of things you learn being on a team, even in any sport other than rugby, like you can apply to like your life. Um, things like being a team player, being disciplined, being committed is a huge part, especially mm -hmm. to rugby. It's like we, we've been working really hard to get everybody up to speed. Right. So it's definitely something I, I could take away from it and use in like the real world. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, we had a we had a, an athlete on last semester who wanted to be uh, become a police officer. He said in large part because he wanted to kind of redeem help redeem the name of police officers yeah. in a way because you know they are sometimes oh, a little yeah. bit in the media a little mm -hmm. bit under attack and they're yeah. at, at certain times and so what I mean I is that a driving force for you at all either too do you, or is it just in terms of is that a factor for you? Oh 100% that's all part of like my idea to make a difference like mm -hmm. just helping the name of being a policeman like bring that up a little bit and also just help people I want to be somebody mm -hmm. that like other like citizens can look up to. What what's what about that makes you? I mean, I know I'm kind of, I'm kind of just coming from a little bit of a different angle now. What because weighing the dangers? How how do you? It's kind of an, we'll talk about this with rugby later too. But weighing the dangers, how do you go out every day and be a police officer, knowing that there could be dangerous things? That I mean, I, I, in a way, there's danger in everything, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, I like that doesn't really deter me. That it honestly excites me and uh, makes me like look up to like that career a mm -hmm. lot more because. Like I said, I don't, I don't really want to be, I don't want to have a conventional job. I don't want to be bored at all. I'm not much of like a guy to be set into a rhythm. Mm -hmm. I like to see change and stuff like that. So obviously, you know, you're big on change. You know, you want to, you want to make, which I think is great. You know, at least yeah. you want to make a positive change. You know, how do you, what do you think the number one way to, to do that is for you anyway? Is, is it just being a police officer, do you think? Or wh what do you want to be able to say that you've changed? Um, as I said before, just be able to like make a difference. I want people to look up to me, you know, mm -hmm. um, even in rugby too, rugby as well, like my other teammates, and that's pretty much it. Okay, then we will have one last question here about you, and we'll kind of transition a little bit into right. uh, rugby. So, okay, Old Forge, we have to ask, well, this is like a little bit of a lighthearted <laughs> one now. So, <laughs> actually for my other class here, we had to do a, a project, and yeah. the whole show was about pizza. So, I mean, have you had Old Forge pizza? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> so, what about what about Old Forge pizza so good? Um, that's, a, that's a very hard question. Um, <laughs> it's just amazing, I don't know, it's square. It's different. Yeah, it's um, a tray, right? Exactly, it's a tray. <laughs> and you get cuts out of it. Right? Cuts, not a slice, <laughs> you know? And I've said that in other areas, and people just look at me like, what is he saying right now? But Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. It's an inside thing. Exactly. All right, well, <laughs> my, my professor will be happy that we talked about <laughs> this here. Okay, well, my conversation with Mike is just getting started. We're going to have much more after this. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole! And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to Beyond the Arch. As my conversation with Mike continues. All right, Mike, we covered it all from police officers to pizza. <laughs> we, we, we're covering it all here yep. on the episode. So, okay, now we're going to jump into 
the sport that you said you kind of just found. I mean, and yep. you love it now. So, well, why? I mean, wh why rugby? I mean, why? Why are you? Why do you feel that you know attraction to it now? Um, it, it is a little similar to soccer as far as like the pace is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, I do like. To, I, I am like a physical player, and mm -hmm. so this sport kind of just fits me pretty well. What's what position did you play when you were a soccer player? Uh, center mid. So like I, I had to do like most of the running, you mm -hmm. know. So I was like right in the good, middle of the action. Already in good shape, I mean, probably, and the conditioning yeah, wasn't yeah. incredibly difficult for you. Anyway, yeah, relatively. Right? I mean, we still work pretty hard at practice, mm -hmm. and I have my moments, but. No, yeah. I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I'd probably be in worse shape than you are, and I definitely <laughs> would be, so <laughs> I can't say anything about that. I did a one-on-one -on -one last year with one of our track athletes. Yeah, it wasn't too oh, really? pretty. No, but. <laughs> no, that had to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Um, so, now you are a scrum half, right? Yeah. So. Why don't you, I don't think I asked Kira this, like exactly what, what does your position entail? Um, basically, like when a player on my team goes down with the ball, I have to make sure I'm there to get the ball and get it back into, back mm -hmm. into play. So in a way, it's kind of like a quarterback, and mm -hmm. it's also kind of like a center mid in soccer. Like okay. We have to be there constantly to help back up our other players and get the ball back into play so we can push up the field. Are you more of a guy that likes to help his teammates more so than necessarily take the spotlight or do you, do you mind the spotlight or what do you I think? mean uh, like of course I don't mind the spotlight and there's mm -hmm. always like so like a person specific moments but mm -hmm. I like my biggest thing is to try and be a team player mm -hmm. I understood stood you you uh, I understood you scored a couple tries also too right uh just the last game yeah it was my the first time that I scored so then I guess the learning curve is yeah it's like I guess you're we're progressing there, pretty well yeah, wow yeah. you're underselling yourself a little yeah. bit here <laughs> no a couple of tries that's yeah, we're, we're all there. learning pretty fast. I mean, we have to. You know, you're on the field. There's Absolutely. Don't have much of a choice. So I asked Kira this, too. I mean, we'll probably see some similarities between her interview here. But, I mean, you know, rugby isn't maybe as popular as, you know, your football or baseball or basketball around here. And, you know, I, maybe you guys could help to change that. It's yeah. a little unfortunate. But um, what is one of the biggest misconceptions about rugby? Um. I think that it's like it, you're immediately going to get hurt or it's a big like huge like just a free for all. Right. Um I was really surprised at how much like they pushed the idea of respect between your own teammates and the other teammates as right. well. Like you think cuz you're tackling and fighting with each other that you know mm -hmm. fights would be breaking out and stuff and you right. just hate the other team but it's really not like that at all. You know, you have conversations with them. You know, you have like fun moments with them and stuff and you become you become friends with them mm -hmm. essentially cuz everybody's out there on the field doing the same thing, you know. How do you how do you dial back that aggression sort of a little bit? Because I think again, maybe this is just an outside perspective looking in it, but you know, it looks like a lot of people are just kind of colliding. And I know there's yeah. there's a method to it, but how do you kind of dial that back to the appropriate level? Uh, I was actually curious that too, like before I first played, mm -hmm. but it's it's a lot easier than I thought. I mean, you're out there on the field for however long the games are, um, just trying real hard, you know, showing that aggression. Mm -hmm. By the time the game's over, like, you're exhausted, and you're yeah. like, all right, it's over, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to – I respect how they played, whether we won mm -hmm. or lost. And, like, that's just something our coaches have always been teaching us, so that's just what we knew and thought to do. How do you I – mean, ta you talked to you before, and Kieran emphasized this too, about the idea of the bonds that it seems as though there's a camaraderie between the rugby community yeah. a little bit more than other sports even. Yeah. So – what do you, how do you turn it, like I asked her this too, how do you turn it on and off? Like how do you turn on, on that competitive, you know, like we, we want to beat these guys and then, you know, then we're friends off the field. You know, how, how do you do that? I think how hard we've been working at practice definitely helps with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, our coaches, like they work us pretty hard, try and get us up to speed mm -hmm. so we can compete with these other teams because we're obviously not as experienced. So that gives you um, like an athletic drive to try and beat the opponents out. Mm -hmm. But regardless, like, it's important to just have fun right. and, and respect everybody, your teammates and the other team. What do you think, why do you think there is that respect factor? I think, I think because of how physical the sport is, I think that it, it kind of makes the sport more civilized, mm -hmm. like, to teach that respect. And then a lot of people are surprised when they hear of, like, a camaraderie like that with rugby. Yeah. Because it, it looks so barbaric in a way, mm -hmm. like, if, if you've never seen rugby before and you watch a game. Right. Well, I think it's kind of similar to a sport like boxing or something yeah. where it, it's, you, like they say in boxing, you know, you know you've been in a fight. I mean, you, you know you've been in, in a rugby match or a rugby yeah. game when you do it because it just takes that toll on you. Yeah. What kind of physical toll has it has it had on you? Because you oh, said you're new. I, so. I've been sore pretty much since we started a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. Um, I have bruises on me wow. and stuff. But it's 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 a rewarding feeling being mm -hmm. sore the next day and, you know, because, like, I, I'm personally, I'm working really hard. Mm -hmm. They're your badges of honor? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. They're like war stories. Okay. <laughs> it's like the stickers on the helmets yeah, or something. Exactly, yeah. So... You talked about you're banged up already. So <laughs> yeah. what, what, what's the motivation to keep going to practice and keep playing? What is it? 
Um, I, I just I, I like that. I like that atmosphere, the competitive atmosphere. I, I like how close my team is. You know, it's especially I'm at a new, like a new I'm at a new school. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have obviously they have too many friends at first, so they help me get like included into right. the whole like college experience. So, does it? What kind of what's your reaction to being able to say that you were the first or one of the first players to play? Marywood rugby. I mean, that's got to be kind of exciting. Oh, it's definitely like a cool story that like I'm obviously gonna tell everybody I see outside of college. Um, and it's definitely gonna be something I hold on to for a while because we were like almost like the guinea pigs at the in the sport. So, and I hope to I hope in like a couple years like it's a huge program. I'd love to see that. So I know in a way maybe a lot of people might think you know it's a disadvantage. And I mean, in some ways it's fair to say that being a newer team is a disadvantage because you don't have the experience yeah. that other teams have. But in a way. Do you view it as somewhat of an advantage because there's this is kind of like a blank slate and whatever you guys make out of it is what you make out of it? Oh yeah, there's definitely like the blank slate idea like that, and it, we're also like really we're, we're I think we're act like motivated more than the general mm -hmm. population because like this is our these are our first games like we want to come out of the gate swinging we mm -hmm. want to make an impression on other teams and stuff like that. Right. So when we go out onto the field, we're all like ready to just try our absolute hardest. What is the mix on the team like in terms of like? experience versus newer people is there a pretty good mixture or what predominantly it's newer experience mm -hmm. newer people mm -hmm. like just like me you know right. they didn't really weren't anticipating it mm -hmm. i mean we have a few kids that they have a little bit of experience or have been talking to coach longer than i have and worked with them a little bit so they definitely help contribute to the team mm -hmm. and like our education as far as the sport's concerned but other than that we're all just trying to learn day mm -hmm. by day that gives you guys a good energy good motivation yeah so all right Along your interview the same way I ended here is I think it's a good always a good ending question. So what's a goal for you personally and a goal for the team and then you know, what what makes being a student athlete worth it for you? Why do you put in the hard work so much? Well, I just wanna see I wanna see my team come together, I wanna see the program grow. Mm -hmm. And uh being a student athlete, it, it's just it's something else to do. It helps like make you proud of your school in a mm -hmm. way because you're you're representing Marywood on the field, both on the field and academically. Mm -hmm. And a goal for you personally and for the team? Uh, personally, for me, like I, um, I want to develop like a good knowledge of the game. I want to see myself improve every game day by day, and I also want to see that for my uh, teammates too. I want to see, I want to see them improving, them learning, and of course, I want us to all like come together as a family because, you know, for the most part, we really don't know each other that well. Well, Mike, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. I mean, <laughs> good luck this season. I'm sure thank you'll you. do great. And right after the break, I'll tell you what you what you can expect next week on Beyond the Arch. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> Cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We Chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. I want to thank Mike for coming on the show tonight. Look for our next episode, and we have a member of one of Marywood's hottest teams early in the season, the field hockey team on Beyond the Arch. Until then, 
head over to TV Marywood's official YouTube page to watch full episodes of the show. Be sure to follow TV Marywood on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Until next time, always remember to look past the jersey and beyond the arch. From everyone at TV Marywood, have a great night.